Chapter 4 Gulliver's Travels We set sail from Bristol to the East Indies on May 4, 1699, and our voyage was at first very prosperous. Unfortunately, we were driven by a violent storm to the northwest of Van Diemen's Land. Twelve of her crew were dead by too much labor and ill food. The rest were in a very weak condition. On the 5th of November, which was the beginning of summer in those parts, the weather being very hazy, the seamen spied a rock within a short distance of the ship, but the wind was so strong that we were driven directly upon it and the ship crashed into it. Six of the crew, of whom I was one, having let down the boat into the sea, tried to get clear of the ship and the rock. We rowed till we were able to work no longer, being already spent with labor while we were in the ship. We, therefore, trusted ourselves to the mercy of the waves, and in about half an hour the boat was overturned by a sudden storm from the north. What became of my companions, I cannot tell, but conclude they were all lost. For my own part, I swam as fortune directed me and was pushed forward by wind and tide. I was extremely tired. Finally, I found myself on the shore. I lay down on the grass which was very short and soft, where I slept sounder than ever, I remembered to have done in my life. When I woke up, it was just daylight. I attempted to rise, but was not able to stir, for, as I happened to lie on my back, I found my arms and legs were strongly fastened on each side to the ground, and my hair which was long and thick, tied down in the same manner. I likewise felt several slender cords across my body, from my armpits to my thighs. I could only look upwards. The sun began to grow hot, and the light offended my eyes. I heard a confused noise about me, but in the posture I lay, could see nothing except the sky. In a little time, I felt something alive moving on my left leg, which was advancing gently forward over my chest, came almost up to my chin, when, bending my eyes downwards as much as I could, I saw that it was a human creature, not six inches high, with a bow and arrow in his hands, and a quiver at his back. In the meantime, I felt at least forty more of the same kind following the first. I was so astonished and screamed so loud that they all ran back in a fright and some of them, as I was afterwards told, were hurt with the falls they got by leaping from my sides upon the ground. However, they soon returned and one of them, who ventured so far as to get a full sight of my face, lifting up his hands and eyes by way of admiration, cried out in a shrill but distinct voice, Hey, keen are they good? The others repeated the same words several times, but then I knew not what they meant.